Hey guys, what's going on? Blaine back for another Netflix review, and today I'm going to be talking about Black Island. Black Island is a German thriller that tells the story of a man named Jonas, a high school student in his local seaside town who's going through a rough patch in his life due to the back-to-back -back deaths of both his grandmother and his parents. With the support of both his surviving grandfather and his friends from school, he's able to move past his family tragedy and tries to live a normal life as much as possible. One year after those tragic events occur, he meets his new homeroom teacher, Helena Young. Jonas and Helena quickly become close to each other to an uncomfortable degree, leading to Jonas's friends investigating Helena for the sake of their friend's well-being. And this leads them to uncovering a conspiracy of sorts, which forces even Jonas to start asking questions about her true motivations for being in the island. I I had to be brutally honest up front and say that I was bored to tears watching this movie. Part of this movie's problem is that pretty much all of its characters lack any sort of depth or personality behind them. The main character, Jonas, is little more than your average goody two-shoes high school student. Sometimes he has good days, sometimes he has bad days, sometimes he misses class. We just have nothing to latch onto as far as his character is concerned. There is an attempt to add some depth to his character through his tragic family backstory as well as his writing interest at school, but the movie never makes a sincere attempt to fully dive into these topics. So as a result, the audience has very little information to go by in order to root for him as a protagonist. Helena Young infuriated me just based on the amount of potential that was wasted on her as a character. I had no idea why she was doing anything in this movie at all up until the last five minutes of it. And even then, I'm still left with more questions than I had when I started. What are her teaching credentials? What did she do in Berlin before she moved to the island? How was she able to locate Jonas's family in the first place? Why did she take so damn long to pursue Jonas? Seriously, the more questions I conjure up, the anger I get thinking about this movie. At first, I thought the reason why she did what she did in this movie is because she wanted to have Jonas all for herself, sort of like in an inappropriate teacher-student relationship, which, I guess is fine. It's a bit stereotypical, but at least it's believable. Eventually though, the movie gets into really weird territory between the two characters when their family histories and the connection between the two is finally revealed. I just couldn't stop rolling my eyes when it was all said and done. It was corny, it was unbelievable, it was over the top, and to top it all off, it was just plain creepy, and I don't mean that in a good way. Theoretically, I can sort of understand the direction the filmmakers were taking in this regard, because this is a thriller after all, and there are supposed to be tense and unsettling scenes throughout. However, the sequences that are supposed to be tense in this movie are largely absent, and the ones that are present are done very poorly. Half the time, I didn't even realize when the movie was trying to be suspenseful, and the few times I noticed where the movie was putting a little bit more effort towards being suspenseful, its attempts to do so were completely laughable. The library scene is a prime example of how not to film a thriller sequence for a thriller movie. Pretty much anything that could go wrong in that scene goes wrong. One, the character that's killed off in that scene doesn't put up any fight whatsoever. She's killed off in the lamest chokehold possible. Two, there are windows everywhere around the library, both inside and outside the school. So there's no way that no one wouldn't have been able to see what was happening in there. Three, the murder takes place during the day at a time when you think that other students would happen to be using the library. Four, nobody notices an obvious dead body being taken outside of school once again during the day as well as that dead character's bike being stolen from its rack. Five, the killer dumps the dead body on the beach, once again in broad daylight, leaving behind a trail of footprints as well as wheel trails with the cart that she used to lift the body to the beach that just seemingly get glossed over. Even if you take the beach's tide into account, I have a very hard time believing that nobody would have seen what was going on, either at the beach or at school, because you gotta remember, this all takes place during the day, during school hours no less. The movie also frustrated me with its use of clues throughout the story. An example of this is during the home renovation scene where a group of students from the school go to Helena Young's house to help her unpack her stuff and fix up the place a bit. There are a few important details that make you think the story is going to go somewhere with them, but they're forgotten about pretty much as soon as they're introduced. Other times, the problem isn't clues related to the main narrative, but also with individual scenes and moments that are attached to it. There's a romance angle that's explored between Jonas and his friend Nina from school, and I was 
was really excited to see how that would play out throughout the rest of the movie, but after all that build up, the movie suddenly drops it out of nowhere and the other characters don't even mention it. And those are just a few of the more interesting scenes that I can think of in preparation for this review. When you get right down to it, 90% of the rest of this movie story is agonizingly slow. Little to nothing substantial happens in the first half of the movie. It mostly consists of people biking to school and then biking home from school, or they bike to someone else's place and then bike home from that person's place. Outside of the scenes that take place at school and people's homes, it's pretty much non-stop biking. It's like, come on guys, do you not have anything else to show us? There are some attempts to make things more interesting along the way, like when Jonas's friends are going through yearbooks to find details about Helena, or certain interactions that take place during school assemblies, but it's just not enough to hold the viewer's attention. There's so little that happens in between these moments that whenever these moments did happen, I didn't really care. There's no substance or sense of urgency behind the investigation that's supposed to be taking place in this movie, and by the time the ending rolls around, if you're like me, you'll practically be pulling hair out of your head due to how cliche the whole thing is. In all fairness though, there's usually at least one good thing about a movie, even if it ends up being a total stinker like this one. So to end on a more positive note, I do have to say that this movie's cinematography is breathtaking. There are a ton of great shots featuring the countryside and the beaches of the town where this movie's story takes place. In an ideal thriller, these long stretches of filming scenery in the background would serve as a break between the more tense sequences, sort of as a breather for the audience to catch up a bit after something crazy happened on screen. It's a shame that the concept of tension is largely absent from a movie that's supposed to be a thriller, and that only makes the long stretches of filming scenery and people biking that much more boring. Overall, Black Island is a bland, boring thriller that simply isn't worth watching. There are little glimmers here and there of what could have been, but it all gets lost in a sea of tedium. If you truly don't mind a film moving at a snail's pace, and you especially enjoy looking at European scenery, I suppose you could find something to enjoy when watching this movie, but otherwise, you're better off staying clear. It's possible that there was some sort of theme or message behind it that I just didn't get, but its characters are so boring, its story is so unfulfilling, and its thrill sequences are so laughable that there was no way I was ever going to get behind this movie. Anyways guys, that's going to wrap up my review of Black Island. Thanks for watching this video, I hope you enjoyed it, and as always stay tuned for the next part, where next time I review the Brazilian comedy, The Secret Diary of an Exchange Student. Bye bye!